Hi everyone, I'm going to be working on an Easter layout right now, and I'm going to start by making some glitter chipboard letters. I needed three E's and two G's for the layout I'm going to do, and I only had one of each. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make them to use. I'm going to start by tracing each letter three times on a scrap piece of white cardstock. I'm going to need six E's total and three G's total. So that's what I'm doing. And I actually put them face down so that the pencil marks won't show on the front. And now I'm simply going to cut them all out. So here is my first G and I'm going to cut out an E now. And I'm going to go and get my glass mat so that I can use my craft knife to cut out the interior parts. So I'm just doing that. And there it's done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the ones that are still on the cardstock and I'm going to cover it completely with adhesive and then lay this one down over it. And now I'm going to use my craft knife to cut around the edge. And then I did that two more times, so I had a total of three. And those are the three letters that I've done. And now I'm using a Zig two-way pen to cover them in liquid adhesive, and I'm sprinkling glitter on them, just a clear or white glitter. Um, because the other letters were the Making Memories Shimmer Jigsaw letters, and so I wanted these to also have shimmer. Now, I'm going to put the Making Memories letters and my letters side by side. And my letters are going to be the letters on the left, and the Making Memories are the letters on the right. So you can see them side by side and how they look exactly the same. And this is just a good tip for chipboard letters. Just layer a few pieces of cardstock and you can have those extra vowels uh, that you need. Next I'm going to be adding a swoosh to the paper. So I'm just freehanding a curve or an arc with pencil and cutting it out with my scissors. I want the arc to be six and a quarter inches vertically. So I'm going to put the edge of the arc at one inch, and then I'm going to count out six and a quarter inches, and then I'm going to use the scrap to retrace the arc. And so now it's exactly six and a quarter inches all the way along. Now I want the swoosh to look like it goes all the way across, all 24 inches, but I don't want to cut another piece of paper. And because I cut the flourish six and a quarter inches tall, I can't cut two out of one. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to use scra the scraps that are left over to make it look like it goes all the way across the page. So I'm just freehanding and cutting an arc, or the appearance of an arc, under the die cut. So now I'm taking my faux flourish, and I'm lining the two pages up next to each other so I can put them right next to each other so it looks like they continue on. And I'm just laying my die cut to see how it looks, and it looks good. So now I just have to do that again on the other edge of the paper. 
And again, I just freehanded these because you don't see very much of them, so they don't have to be exact. I just eyeballed it, and that looks good. So I'm also going to stick that one down. And now I'm going to stick down the large die cut from Jenny Bolin. I think it's really beautiful. I actually like it a lot. And I'm using my grid paper or my grid on my mat to help me center it. So that's what it looks like now. And I decided that there were going to be some chipboard flowers on my layout. So I'm just punching some yellow patterned paper to use as their centers. And the centers of the flowers were 7 8 of an inch, so I'm using my 7 8 inch punch. And then for the smaller flowers, I'm just going to adhere the entire circle to the back of the flower. And the edge will cover it. So I've finished um, getting those ready. And I'm now going to make some grass. So I cut a two and a half inch by 12 inch piece of dark green paper and a two inch by 12 inch piece of light green paper. And I'm using a pencil and my Fiskars trimmer to mark an inch on the edge of each page because I don't want to go farther down than an inch. And now I'm putting the two strips of dark green paper um, printed side to printed side so they'll be mirror images of each other and I'm cutting them both at the same time and since I'm freehanding this grass I wanted to cut them both at the same time um, to save myself some time and I'm going to do the same with the green and I'm just freehanding this grass just to make it look any which way. And these are both patterned papers. One has a very light flourish. The dark green has a very light flourish. And the light green has a little polka dot. And I thought it just made it fun. And I thought it made it look more like grass because grass is so variegated in color. Just finishing up trimming the green. About this point, I was wondering why I decided to have grass on my layout. I was really tired of cutting grass. Um, luckily, I spared you most of the grass cutting. And so my plan is just to layer the light green over the dark green again to give it a more grassy look um, because grass is dark and light green. And I'm now going to lay out the letters. I'm going to have them follow the flourish because I think that's more fun. And now that I know where my title will be, I'm just laying out the flowers to see where I want them. And now I'm going to ink them. I'm going to make some of them pink, some of them blue, and some of them purple. And now I'm just going to stick down the title before I go any further since I do know exactly where I want it to be. I'm just adding the memory book glue dots. And there's the last letter. And now I'm going to cut little pieces of this bright green ribbon. And I'm going to glue them behind the dark green grass. And I'm going to use them as stems for the chipboard flowers. So I'm just going to finish putting down all the pieces of ribbon for the stems and then adhering all the chipboard flowers to the layout. And then I will be back with part two of the Easter egg layout. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.